Brilliant. Thanks very much. Yeah, um, my name is John Regan. I was, uh, was a PhD student here back in uh, the mid 2000s, so it's, uh, it's nice to be back, actually. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is following on actually from Hannah's really nice talk um, is how, how we might see the black holes that we're now seeing with JWST, um, but also how to see more uh, black holes in generally maybe general maybe in in massive galaxies. So I'll talk about the challenges we have at, at high redshift. Um, generally speaking in the field, mainstream at least, black holes are kind of broken down into light seeds and heavy seeds. Light seeds you can kind of think as somewhere between zero and a thousand solar masses. Heavy seeds heavier than that. Okay, and that's generally the way the literature has gone and the community decide to break these things up. Um, and that's that's good and bad. Um, I'll talk about the environmental factors that are at play for both forming light seeds and heavy seeds. And I'll also talk about some of the opportunities from electromagnetic signatures and also from gravitational waves that might help us to disentangle where are the seeds, what are the seeds maybe, okay? Um, so I, I was kind of surprised this plot maybe hadn't been shown already, but um, this was a plot from Robert, one of Roberto's papers. So here we have the JWST black holes. So these are the, the blue squares here. Uh, these are some of the quasars and these are some of the local relations. What we see predominantly from JWST is a lot of the black holes in the galaxies appear to be overmassive. So overmassive relative to the stellar population. So they seem unusually massive. And we're trying, that's another thing on top of the fact that we see them at all is what we're trying to understand. Okay, but I hopefully to show that this all kind of fits together. Um, so I'm not the first person to show this talk, or show this slide, and it probably won't be the last week, uh, last one this week. But this was a, a plot, of course, made by Martin um, approximately IOA years ago. Um, and it, it drew out, and it was very prescient, actually, because Martin, if you remember, like, you have to remember back to the time, we had no Redshift 6 black holes at the time. I think we had Redshift 3 ones, right? So Martin was already looking ahead, and he was kind of forward planning or forward modeling the disaster would be if we were to find massive black holes at a Redshift of 6. And he had already uh, the ideas of maybe a supermassive star, a dense stellar cluster, runaway black hole growth, and so on, or direct collapse. Okay, so he's already looking at this. Um, but as I said, the, the field has moved on and simplified. We're not as clever. And we've just broken it down into light seeds and heavy seeds. So what I'm going to do in this talk is I'm going to talk about the different pathways. So if we have light seeds, these should be the remnants of population three stars. So these should form out of the first generation of stars. And if they are to be the massive black holes at the center of galaxies, they must grow very, very quickly. And they have to reach, if you're a quasar, 10 to the 9 solar masses. And even if you're a JWST black hole, maybe 10 to the 7. So that's quite the undertaking, uh, growing at, at hyper or super Eddington um, growth rates, at least. Eddington is not probably going to work. On the other side of the plot, we have the heavy seeds. These are the mechanisms. I won't talk much about this, but I would say that the rapid assembly model, where, where the galaxies grow really quickly, is, is the one at least I favor. Um, at the moment. Um, and they can lead to, or, to either supermassive star formation or maybe just a dense environment allowing heavy seeds to form and grow. Okay, And that's kind of where the, the field is, is at at the moment. Um, I'm skipping over a little bit just in the interest of the big picture and I'm just going to talk about light seeds. We ran some high resolution simulations about 10 years ago called the Renaissance simulations. And actually, Steve Finkelstein actually introduced them a little bit in his movie at the, at the very start of his introduction today. So I'll thank him for that. But I won't go into the details. But what it did contain is models for population three star, for, star formation and population two star formation. It was essentially focusing on galaxy formation in the very early universe. And what we end up with in the Renaissance simulation, simulations is 20,000 black holes, 20,000 light seed black holes. So we can look at every one of those black holes within Renaissance and see do any of them grow. What we found, to, to, uh, to cut a long story short, is that effectively none of them grew. Not a single black hole out of 20,000 grew. We saw the most growth was 10%. So the, if you imagine that if they take, if there are 100 solar masses, the most growth we saw was, you know, 10 solar masses onto that. Okay, so you started with 100 and you ended up at 110. So, and that was over 200 mega years, down to about a redshift of 12. Okay, I'm simplifying things a little bit, but that's basically what happened. I was surprised by this. Um, I was expecting 
light seeds to be the solution, to be honest, to be frank, but it doesn't work out. Why doesn't it work out? Uh, it doesn't work out because if you're a black hole, most of the time, you're nowhere near anything dense. Okay, you just have no accretability, if you like. If there's dense gas near you, it doesn't know you're a black hole, it doesn't know you want to eat it, it instead forms stars or it just gets photo evaporated. Sometimes the black hole does interact with it, okay? But it's fleeting. And so we see a little bit of growth the odd time, that was the 10%, but in general, zip, okay? So what we could conclude from that is that light seeds have a less than one in 10 to the four probability of growth from our simulations, okay? And that's what we see. Um, like I said, they're high resolution. They're probably the best simulations of the early universe we have so far, and that's what we see. But environment matters a lot. So when we looked at more idealized simulations more recently, and we put, I think it was, I can't remember, I think it was like 100 black hole seeds, maybe 1,000, I'm not sure exactly, 100 black hole seeds or 1,000 into a very dense environment, we do see growth. We see about 10% or 5% of them showing very rapid growth. This galaxy is idealized. It does have population three uh, star formation. It does have supernova feedback, but it doesn't have black hole feedback yet. We haven't put that in. But we do see really rapid growth. But this is a very, very dense, very gas-rich environment. So that's what you need to grow these things. And about 10% of them grow. Okay, and they should show high predicate growth up to about 10 to the 5 solar masses. So if we can get galaxies like that, then maybe we can grow them. Okay, but they're hard galaxies to get. They're very uh, rare. Okay, so uh, heavy seeds then on the other hand. How about them? So we looked at the Renaissance simulations again. What we looked for for dense, again, compact, rapidly growing galaxies. And we said, okay, good. So Renaissance doesn't have any prescription for heavy seeds. It doesn't, it doesn't have a prescription that puts black holes into galaxies. That wasn't kind of a thing, I guess, 10 years ago, and we didn't do it. Uh, but we came in post-processing. We look at the galaxies. We identify the dense, compact ones that are growing rapidly, and we populate them, and we see what the overall population looks like. Okay, so this is, and we zoomed into one of these galaxies, and what did we find? We see heavy seed formation. Okay, so I'm tracking the most massive star. In this case, these are stars that are forming. Let's run that again because it moves quite quickly. Over here is the last frame. Well, you can see it's a very dynamic environment. So again, you can see even if you throw black holes into here, they don't stick to the gas very easily, and neither do the stars. Everything just is so dynamic. That the potential well is very shallow. It's very hard for black holes to grow. It's very hard for stars to grow as well. So these are growing stars in this in this simulation. The most massive star we get to is about 6,000 solar masses. So these seem like very, very um, potentially strong candidates for heavy seeds. Okay, there's a couple of things as well that I want to touch on. These stars will be red, okay, because they're accreting so rapidly. They're accreting uh, high entropy gas, which makes the stars red. So they're not blue. Uh, the other thing is that we see when we, uh, when we uh, push these stars to a stellar... Um, population code or stellar, stellar evolution code, we see that they produce a lot of nitrogen, okay? And that nitrogen matches pretty well with what JWST is seeing. So these things like, look like good candidates for explaining the high nitrogen abundances. There's a bunch of assumptions going into that though, because we don't know what a 6,000 or a 10,000 or a 20,000 or a 2,000 solar mass star will really do at the end. Like, does it go supernova? Probably not. Probably collect, uh, directly collapses into a black hole but it could well pulsate and push out a lot of metals. And that's what, that's what we modeled to uh, understand the nitrogen abundance. Um, what do the number densities look like? So the number densities that we get, if you focus maybe on this plot, because we started at a redshift 20, but you know, we're not there yet. But a redshift 12 is getting very close to what like GNZ11 is. Okay, well, we get a number density for heavy seas of about one per co-moving megaparsec. Okay, if that means nothing to you, the quasar number density is about one in in 10 to the 9. So we're six orders of magnitude, or sorry, nine orders of magnitude above that. The little red dots that uh, Steve Finkelstein mentioned as well, they have a number density down here around 10 to the minus 3. So our number densities are very consistent because you need to be an order of magnitude uh, uh, above what you're seeing because not all of them will be bright, not all of them will be active. You might get 10% being active. So you need to be at a number density of around 10 to the minus 2. So that appears to be right. So what this tells you, it doesn't really tell you that heavy seeds are the answer, but it does tell you that you need these dense, compact environments. And it's in those dense, compact environments you could maybe grow light seeds, or you grow 
And or else you form and grow heavy seeds. Either of those is definitely possible. So these are the messages I want you to take home. The pathway is still open, I think, and it's going to be very difficult to, to break down. Both mechanisms, as far as I can see, seem totally viable. I don't think anybody will dispute the fact that you probably, I think it's totally believable that you get light seed growth. Okay? I know there's probably a lot of people in the room who don't believe in heavy seeds. That's fine. Um, but as far as we can tell, they seem perfectly viable as well. And it might be that we need them. My guess is, is that the right, the right dense, compact environment allows you to both grow light seeds, but also form and grow heavy seeds. And I don't see why you can't have both. There's nothing that rules that out as far as I can see. Um, the other thing I should probably mention, since I seem to have time, is that if you go back to this slide here, how am I doing on time? It's three minutes, great. Um, we don't grow one, okay? So that's a limitation of simulations at the moment. Most simulations populate these halos with one black hole. So that's, that's wrong. There's gonna be lots of them in it, okay? So Lisa is gonna be ringing with these things. These things will merge a lot, okay? So we'll have a synergy as well with Lisa, Einstein Telescope, and Cosmic Explorer all coming online in the early 2030s, and it should ring with bumps in the mass spectrum around 10 to the 5. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thanks. Thank you.